We're glad to have you back. Well, a lot of talks around the Lagos budget. Uh, interesting stuff uh, there. But let's move forward and talk more about the CBN's recent focus on promoting financial inclusion and supporting domestic production, which offers promising avenues for long-term growth. Meanwhile, experts say navigating Nigeria's monetary policy environment requires multifaceted approaches and a clear vision for the future. Uh, to put or uh, provide some perspective to this, I'm being joined by an investment strategy manager. He's with Afri Invest West Africa, Mr. Temitokwe Omoshu. He joins me from the United Kingdom. Uh, it's good to see you. Compliments of the season, Mr. Omoshu. Thank you very much. Salute for having me. Good to see you. Well, I know you've been following what's happening here. Uh, you've been reading reports and all. And um, recently, the IMF has come to say, well, some of these reforms seems like the way to go. Uh, we have to start seeing results uh, at the moment. But first, let's start with these reforms, specifically what is happening around monetary policy. What do you make of all of this? Free market for our currency, free market for a subsidy, allowing demand and supply, demand, uh, decide the prices of all of this. Uh, do you think that really is the way to go for us? All right. Thank you very much again, Tolu, for having me. And um, really, we are discussing a very important you know, topic. And um, we're talking about the importance of markets. And um, there's what, one thing about the market that you cannot take away from it is efficiency. Market is very efficient. You cannot lie to the market. For instance, if the if um, the monetary policy authority is saying that reserves is buoyant or they are saying something contrary to the reality, market to definitely know. For instance, when when we did not, you know, at some point that we did not know the uh, situation of the uh, financial status of the CBN, you know, market had already traded sufficiently that the reserve was encumbered. So what I'm saying in essence is that market is efficient, irrespective of what monetary policy authority does, which is why it is important to allow market to determine what happens. Because at mm -hmm. every point in time that market is suppressed, right, you would definitely have a lot of, uh, you create a lot of arbitrage opportunities across the market, across the market, ranging from interest rates, uh, you know, uh, interest rate markets, that is the fixed income market, exchange rate market, commodities market, we saw for PMS, you know, uh, you know, as a result of um, the fact that we had subsidy, you know, subsidy would just ensure that PMS is not sold at what is market reflective. And, you know, as a result of that, we've, we've been seeing incessant, you know, frequent um, fiscal city um, situation in Nigeria, especially in December. And uh, if you go to FS as well, despite the fact that the CBN has taken some measures in recent times, um, the NAFEM rate, which is now the unified, you know, uh, rate compared to the several windows we used to have in, um, that 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 was prevalent during the past um, administration, you know, we have the rate at about a thousand now compared to parallel market that is about one thousand two hundred. So, due to the fact that we are delayed a lot to allow market to determine pricing, we saw those kind of setbacks. So now that we are talking about um, you know, uh, allowing market to determine price. Then we can begin to, uh, you know, we can begin to talk about the uh, the the the, uh, the interest of foreign investors because that's what they want to see. And I think it's very important uh, uh, for me to mention that policies are means to an end, and the end will definitely justify the means because right now we've been seeing reforms. You know, you, you had already mentioned earlier that. The IMF alluded to the reforms that um, that have occurred in the last um, six, six months in Nigeria. Same with the uh, report that was published yesterday by the World Bank that um, about the uh, macroeconomic update for Nigeria. They also itemized some of these reforms. In addition to that, much recently, Modi also upgraded the outlook for our rating from you know stable to positive. So all of that are just showing that yes, they are watching these reforms. However, Nigerians are less concerned about reform. Their concern, you know, is all about the impact of this reform on macro variables that affect them. How are these reforms affect, affecting price stability? So what I mean by price stability, you have to look at FS stability, interest rate stability, and commodity prices stability. 
So if these reforms are not touching the variables that I've just mentioned, nobody would really care, you know, which is why reform is not just enough on its own. The actionable, the action that comes to reform is what people are really, you know, are really focusing on. So as much as we talk about a market-friendly approach to policy, ranging from what the monetary policy authority is doing and the fiscal authority, what are we seeing in the market? Are we seeing the, uh, the, the fact that these things are happening? Are we seeing um, uh, a convergence between the official rates and parallel market rates? The reality is right there in front of us. NAFEM rates, like I mentioned, 1,000 or slightly above that, and the um, uh, parallel market is 1,200, you know, naira to a dollar. So we have to also watch and make some of this push aggressively, the, you know, implementation of this reform, because in, in the next um, six months to one year, investors will begin to look at numbers. They will look at the inflation condition in Nigeria, look at the exchange rates, look at capital importation, what's the head of our fiscal policy in terms of um, a fiscal condition, they will look at uh, our debt service to revenue ratio, desktop to revenue ratio, external debt, you know, among other things, because by then they would have given us enough time to really bring these reforms to numbers because what they want to invest in is numbers and not just reform. Reform is a pointer that we are on track. However, numbers, fat, figures are what investors would want to um, you know, really invest in or assess before bringing their money to Nigeria. Yes, we have seen a couple of very interesting reforms uh, by the CBN, ranging from the fact that they had narrowed the asymmetric corridor around the monetary policy uh, 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 monetary policy rate. That is, they reduce it from about 500, uh, 200 to 700. It's now narrowed to around uh, 500, so as to ensure that as they are changing monetary policy rates, is also reflective in the uh, capital market and money market. Same thing, you know, at some point, we didn't even hear about FOMO anymore. But as, uh, after the, uh, um, uh, this new administration, like one, once, one, when they uh, came aboard, they started, you know, FOMO. And FOMO is very important when it comes to monetary policy, you know. To, and in addition to that, we also saw that they have lifted restriction on the 40, about 43 items that could not have access to FS. All of those are pointers to, you know, the kind of reforms that market wanted from the outset. And for fee subsidy as well, you know, we talked about the fact that it's been removed, right? Although there's been, there, there have been a bit of um, controversy around if it has been fully removed or it's, it's still a gradual thing. Because if you look at uh, PMS price in Nigeria, in liter, and you compare to what is sustainable across country in the UK, Canada, and all that, you if, if you just do a comparison by not considering any you know noise in the calculation, you should you should be begin to see over a thousand uh, naira to uh, 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 for a liter in Nigeria. But there's still a bit of controversy around that, and there's still the fact that NAFEM rates and parallel mar markets are quite different, which shows that in that regard. Yes, yeah, subsidy. And the last point, which I think uh, the CBN has pushed forward, is interest rate subsidy. You know, this week, the CBN, uh, the central bank governor, mentioned unequivocally that they have stopped developmental financing. In fact, this is very laudable because that was exactly what we complained for the last eight years that um, the CBN uh, shifted attention from the main focus of price stability and financial system stability to. Uh, more like quasi fiscal uh, 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 policy strategy. What the, the, the CBN governor, in fact, he mentioned that yesterday at the at the program organized by the World Bank that they have stopped it and they will allow you know programs that are still um, ongoing. They would that they think that it has you know uh, a substantial impact on the economy to complete, but new developmental financing will be stopped, which will help them to now focus strictly, strictly. On their objective, which is price stability and financial, you know, system stability. So, by and large, those policies and reforms are good, but Nigerians are waiting for the impact on their lives. Price uh, in terms of inflation, exchange rates, among other um, areas. Hmm. Deep one there, uh, Mr. Omoshui. Uh, uh, now, many would say tightening of monetary and fiscal policies will be the way to go when issues like this pop up. But I want to ask you uh, that um, on the other side, which is the fiscal side, 
and many will say revenue is needed. And uh, Taiwo Daily Led Committee is trying to do everything to harness tax, uh, of course, tax uh, opportunities within the tax net and uh, non oil space to gather in some money. We also expect some monies from subsidy that has been taken out. So, do you think that all of this can help us ramp up uh, revenue to support at least some developmental projects or even social infrastructure programs? Yes, I, I believe that these reforms from those uh, policies that are being put together, in fact, uh, interestingly, we've been seeing communication by uh, Taiwo Yedili and the markets, different areas from uh, the legal stands, capital markets, uh, small and medium scale enterprises. And, you know, the, 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 this uh, committee has been interfacing with different groups so as to get their views and to address areas that will be a, you know, a win-win for both parties, not a zero-sum game, where the government will win and these groups will also win. So, really, those moves are laudable, right? And then um, we have also seen that, yes, you talked about increasing interest rate being a major instrument at the disposal of the uh, monetary policy authority to address inflation. But that could be a bit tricky because if you ask yourself what the, uh, what the uh, factor uh, driving inflation is in Nigeria, it's quite different from what is obtainable in advanced countries. As a matter of fact, we have seen in, in recent times, right, we have seen substantial increase in interest rate, right? MPR increased from less than 12% to over 18%. But money supply kept growing by more than 10, 15 percent. So increasing increasing interest rates is just a policy to, to a transmission mechanism from interest rate to money supply and to the economy uh, in terms of how money supply, which captures aggregate demand, will affect prices is what is of the essence. Which is why the CBN has made it clear, and we also want to continue to encourage you know the authority to remain committed to that threshold of ways and means, because it's possible for interest rate to keep growing and ways and means is rising, which is a subcomponent of money supply. So uh, it's not just about interest rate increase. That's my point, because if interest rate is uh, increasing, right, and money supply is also growing, inflation would be a problem, right? So as much as, yes, the fiscal authority is looking at how to mobilize revenue, right? Mobilization of revenue is for an end. And the end is for fiscal authority to have enough money to spend on infrastructure and to growth, you know, areas of the economy. So there has to be a delicate balance because you see businesses in Nigeria are going through a lot you know, in terms of um, 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 high cost of doing business. So government at this point did not have to strike a very delicate balance between managing the huge fiscal deficit. This year, government is looking at about nine trillion fiscal deficit, you know. So it's just a bit of a decline from what we saw last year, about 12 trillion, right? 9 trillion this year, and that's just barely um, about 6% of, of GDP. So higher than the threshold. However, the trajectory is a bit um, is a bit disturbing. However, they have to manage the delicate balance if they want to drive revenue aggressively and also encourage businesses. Because if you are too aggressive with revenue mobilization, the entities, companies that are um, you know, that I employ people, if there are more taxes on them, you know, that could create, you know, uh, more problems. So I think the conversation has been around how to become more efficient with government tax collection, which has to do with, you know, also addressing areas that uh, 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 are covered by no state tax collector. We see a lot of them in Lagos. You see people collecting money from the informal sector, you know, this um, informal market, and they don't get to the government. So they are looking at this, I believe they are looking at approaches to address all of these areas. In fact, many people pay taxes in Nigeria directly or indirectly, but just don't get to the government. So I think the attention, as they have just started, you know, uh, to do, they should continue to focus on the efficiency and not just increase in tax. And for Monetary Policy Authority, I, we, we like the fact that they are now uh, quite focused in terms of their mandate. Just focus on price stability, financial system stability, and leave uh, Ministry of Finance and federal government to addressing those 
factors that they should focus on. And on inflation, yes, we know that they will have to address money supply. If that's the limit they can go. Allow they should have, they should just allow the fiscal policy to address issues around infrastructure, issues around around them um, 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 food production, right, and uh, energy security that have continued to contribute to um, elevated price level. You know, it is even more interesting at this time because wherever you see the minister uh, minister of finance, you are most likely going to find the CPA governor. So that could be signaling is trying to sh you know that shows the market that there could be a kind of synergy in policy direction. So which we think that is ultimately good um, for the country, but we understand that yes, it will take a while for some of these policies to have impact on Nigerians, but critically. The CBM must ensure that you know communication. We co there's communication and there's guidance. So um, I just think that, as they have stated, which is about the communication, there has to be commitment to the you know letter to ensure that these policies are implemented right from the monetary policy to the fiscal policy authority. Mm, another interesting one there. But you, you you commended the central bank for pulling out of some development financing, which everyone has been commending through. I would say, too, because at a point, the CBN was almost intervening in every sector of the Nigerian economy. But what sort of interventions are you now expecting going forward from the Apex Bank? We don't expect any major intervention from the CBN that does not address the key objective of the central bank. As a matter of fact, interventions are not within the purviews of the central bank, um, you know, governor or the central bank. In fact, the central bank governor said yesterday that they don't have the capacity to do uh, developmental financing because if they want to finance different sectors of the economy, they must have expertise in those areas. If you want to finance agriculture, then you have to, you must have people that will follow through the value chain, through the project circle from the inception evaluation, monitoring, and all of those processes. They must have someone that will go. But they said they don't have the capacity. So, which means they should just focus strictly on how they will use the tool of monetary policy to address, you know, their core mandate, price stability, financial system stability, stability which by extension will affect financial inclusion to address issues about um, food security and the energy security is largely tied to the Federal government is largely tied to the fiscal policy authority. So different interventions that we expect in the economy should come from the fiscal authority, ranging from addressing issues around you know electricity supply, road network, employment, you know, mention, mention it agriculture, among others. So I don't particularly, I don't expect any major intervention from the CBN. What I think they should do and which they are committed to doing is just to begin to, uh, use, uh, to begin to use their direct and indirect approach to, to, to address the objective, which their direct approach is, you know, they just use those um, OMO, they use interest rates and all of those standing lending facility, deposit facility, uh, among others, to um, ensure that money supply is at optimal level. And I think, interestingly, I remember that when the CBN governors spoke at a CIBN program, they talked about the fact that they had not set up a team at the CBN that will focus solely every day to continue to monitor optimal money supply level in the economy so as to manage you know price stability you know as government is addressing agriculture you know energy security and all of those issues that would affect um that would affect price stability the central bank would just focus on money supply and how that affects exchange rate because today to if I give you a billion naira what comes to your mind is how you want to import some things that have that, that interest you a lot and maybe you could not afford sometimes back or you know if you give nigeria and you know huge money today that's what they think about importation and all of that so which is why it is important for them to keep managing the angle of naira supply that have continued to put pressure on the fs market because that has a substantial it has an attendant impact on price stability so on intervention i think we should just leave the federal government to that aspect or that area. Hmm. So when are we going to start to see uh, the right word is impact of some of these decisions on both sides now, fiscal, uh, monetary side? You know that or you would agree with me 
that the impact of the removal of petrol subsidy is still hitting hard and everyone is talking about it, uh, impact on prices, purchasing power of Nigerians and all of that. So when do you think uh, that uh, we'll start to see results in the short, medium, and of course, long term? I know it's not an overnight thing, but can we just have a little bit of projection? Yeah, I think if you have to go by case studies of countries that have taken this kind of reform, for instance, Egypt had this kind of reform in 2015, 2016, right? And what we saw was that inflation rose from about 12% to over 26% in Egypt within two years. It took the third year before inflation started decelerating and unemployment became better, you know, and they now enjoyed a bit of FS stability and level of you know, uh, um, um, improvement in economic performance. So if I'm to go by uh, by those numbers, right, it would take a bit of time, say 2025, before Nigerians will begin to see the impact, like, you know, traceable impact, not just by numbers. You know, numbers, is possible for inflation to decelerate. And people on the streets will tell you that they cannot feel what you're talking about. You're telling us that inflation decelerated from 27%, and it's not 20%, but things are still expensive. We can see all of that. In 2024, exchange rate could remain stable around 1,000 to 1,003. Inflation could come down. Fiscal deficits could adjust a little because of maybe more earnings from oil. Oil production has improved and prices are relatively stable. So we could begin to see impact on numbers, but palpable impact, impact that will be fed by Nigeria. It could take a while, say as long as even 2025, 2026, because policy reforms are major disruptions and disruptions come with pain right so i think that we, in terms of the exact impact on people we should begin to look at 2025 but impact on macro numbers we should begin to look at um, uh, q4 2024 hmm. q4 2024 well let's see how all of this uh plays out a lot of a lot of work really needs to be done uh, as an investment person, before I let you go, what do you make of uh, Nigeria's drive to attract more investments into the country? You we see what the president's been doing, going from uh, one country to another. Uh, what do you make of it, and how attractive is Nigeria at this time? Investors are looking at the reforms. They are watching keenly, but they want to see the numbers, right? Mm. Investors don't bet on stocks and reform a line on paper. Mm. Investors will want to see that your reserves has increased from $3 billion to $50 billion. They would they want to say that exchange rates remain stable around 1002 or 1005 whichever level, for a very long time. Investors want to see that they bring in money and they are able to take it out. They need case studies. So what I'm saying in essence is that as much as we have seen conversation, roadshows, Right by Nigeria in London Stock Exchange, New York, you know, Stock Exchange, and a couple of others. These are just to show that yes, Nigeria is ready for business. But foreign investors, whenever they do their presentation to consider a country for investment, they look at numbers. What is happening to those variables that I've just mentioned to you? Interest rate. What is happening to companies in Nigeria in terms of profitability? Do we have more investors, FDI, coming to the country? What are we seeing in terms of, you know, legacy issues, the legal system, and, you know, among other issues, insecurity and all that too. Investors want to see numbers. They want to see improvement in our balance of payments, you know. That is, that shows the health of our external sector. They want to see that GDP is also growing substantially. A 2.5%, 2.7%, or 3% is not enough. They want to see all of these numbers before... They cannot begin to bring money to the country, although we know that what is happening in the euro bond market right now could help the government in terms of, you know, um, 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 getting some FS inflows into the country by um, by issuing uh, maybe euro bond next year because yields are now coming lower. That could help the government, you know, to borrow some money and proper preserve because investors want to see that if uh, they are able to take away their money whenever they want to do that, once they inflow their, you know, uh, um, resources into the country. And the major parameter is strong FS reserve over a long period of time. You know, the conversation is still about the percentage of uh, uh, CBN's reserves that is encumbered. The last number we saw, right, 
uh, the financials that we saw was just for 2022. We know the extent of encumbrances in 2023, not yet. So they can begin to extrapolate, looking at the numbers, and um, you know, just discount it by certain percentage, and they begin to feel that it, it could still be a bit of encumbrances here and there. So once we have improvement in reserves, once there's a protracted price stability, substantial economic growth that mirrors a bit of our purchasing power, all of those numbers are quite critical for us to get substantial level of investment irrespective of the category, foreign portfolio investment, foreign direct investment, all of that, those numbers are quite critical. Even if we talk about the reform, it gets more uh, policy strategy and we put the papers out there, as many as all of these things we put out there, if, if it does not translate to numbers, investors will stay on the sideline. But once our number improves, you should, you should you should expect that they are all going to come to Nigeria because all they want is return on investment. Investors are uh, are not essentially you know emotional about any country. What they want is return on investment and even return of investment. You know ROI. You know, people say it's return on investment. They also want return of their investment. Are they able to get back their money when they want to exit the country, even if they have not made anything? So those are the questions that we need to answer and what we continue to watch going forward. I must thank you so much for your brilliant contributions on the program. Mr. Temitokwe Omoshu is an investment strategy manager. He's with Afri Invest West Africa. Thank you so much. You joined us from the United Kingdom. Thank you, Tolu.